the bell tower, the Campanile mm -hmm. and in the center, and then on the left, the just a little corner of the baptistry, and on the back end, the Cathedral of Florence with Bernaleschi's dome at the top. Right. The baptistry is a medieval building um, from the 10th century, probably. Um, the cathedral, the Duomo, uh, they began building almost around 1300, and the bell tower starts going up a little bit uh, after that, and then the dome is built from the early 1400s and finished in the 1470s. So what are we looking at with the bell tower? The bell tower, right now we're going to concentrate on the very bottom. Uh, around 1340, even though the tower wasn't completely complete yet, they decided the uh, town and the guilds of Florence, um, specifically the uh, wool guild that was in charge of decorating the cathedral, decided that they wanted to decorate the bottom of the tower, because even though it was incomplete, it was embarrassing having just this bare, undecorated surface where everyone's walking around, as you can see, all the time. And so the two very bottom layers are decorated with many reliefs. Uh, and these are in stone, marble, rather than the bronze that's on the baptistry. The reliefs cover a lot of subjects. There are biblical scenes, there are signs of the zodiac, and there are also scenes of local art and industry. Wow. Um, some of these things may sound unusual. Of course, the biblical scenes make sense right. on the church building. But Even industry? Not... Those are a little bit unusual. We'll see why they might want to include those. Uh, we should also say that the Zodiac signs are not unusual no. because the medieval Christians were very able or very comfortably yeah. uh, blended their belief in uh, Christianity and their Christian devotion with interest in the horoscope. Yeah, and we see that a lot in medieval churches. That's right. Yeah. Let's look at some of these reliefs. Here's one of the religious scenes. This is the creation of Adam. The artist is Andrea Pisano, who around the same time is working on the bronze reliefs just across the street on the south doors of the baptistry. Those scenes are about John the Baptist, and here's one of the biblical scenes on the bell tower. And again, this is typical of his style as we've described it. It's very, very simplified with mostly a blank background, just a few things to give you a sense of the setting. Here are a few stylized trees. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have God leaning over and creating Adam. And yeah, in, literally out of the, the <laughs> dust of the earth. <laughs> exactly. It sort of takes form. Right. And this is a good, another good example of how Andrea Pisano combines a kind of Gothic stylization with a naturalistic classicism. Where do you see the Gothic stylization? Well, the figure of God the Father, in some ways the way the robes are rendered without a great sense of the body underneath, right. the kind of rhythmic folds, uh, all of this is pretty right. traditional. Right. So we have a sense of the body, but there's not a, a, an entire sense of a real physical, anatomically correct body underneath that That's right. Library, like there will be later with Donatello. Mm -hmm. And instead the figure of Adam is a yeah. nude athletic male, yeah. even though it's, it's damaged classical. here, it's, it's classicizing and it's naturalistic. He's in a contrapposto stance, even though he's lying down. Now, that doesn't make any sense. Contrapposto is usually something for standing up. Uh, right. But that the fact that he's done that anyway mm -hmm. shows how interested he was in giving it a classical appearance. And yeah, then, and we can see his ribs exactly. and some muscles there, too. That's right. So this is very typical for his style. Here now we're looking at one of the scenes of local industry. Wow, well, this is looks a lot like the one of God creating Adam. Well, it's interesting that you say that because the industry that's represented here is sculpture. And <laughs> this is uh, an interesting way for an artist, Andrea Pisano, to suggest that the work of the sculptor, the work it's of like the, the artist, of is in some ways like the work of God. Mm -hmm. Both are creators. Mm -hmm. In fact, we also see, again, the creator here, the artist, leaning over a bearded man in rather stylized robes, leaning over a nude Nat more naturalistic, more classicizing figure. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he's not going to get in trouble. There's a sense of modesty here, because look again and compare this to the way God creates Adam. God is in nature. He uses a gesture of his hand, and Adam right. is clearly supposed to be a real living person. Right. When we look at the sculptor in the studio, he's in the studio. He's using tools. Right. The use of the tools is really conspicuous. You that can't shows create simply by his exactly. word or by some kind of spiritual action. That's right. And also what he's creating is not going to be mistaken for a real person. It's right. stiff and it's much smaller in scale. But still, it's, it seems to be almost a sign of the, the desire to elevate the status of the artist. It absolutely is a sign of that. And it's also definitely a sign of the pride that the Florentines take in their arts. I mean, this is a very important location, the bell right. tower of the cathedral and they're displaying, in a way, what makes them proud and prosperous as Florentines. Right. In a, one part, it's the arts. 
And, and so this could be described as part of that civic pride that I always think of as so important in terms of commissioning so much art in the Renaissance. That's right. Here's another scene of local industry. This is weaving, uh, which is one of the main reasons why Florence is so very prosperous around 1340 when these reliefs are being made. You could talk about it in terms of the style being typical for Andrea Pisano, the boiling down to the essential ingredients. But really what this stands out is the way it celebrates industry, manual yeah. labor, and the things right that make the city where it is. Building, it's amazing. Yeah. And so the guilds were really powerful in enriching the city and and decorating the city with beautiful sculptures and reliefs, and at the same time wanted to see their own image in a way. That's right. Mm -hmm. 